Hi, my name is Jim. Um, my wife and I own a place called the Boom Boom Room in St. Louis, Missouri. It's kind of a vaudeville burlesque inspired deal. And we needed some way to mic our tap dancers because we do these kind of like variety vaudeville shows. So being an audio engineer and music composer and musician, I was like, I really want this to be thunderous and loud like a musical instrument, like an electric guitar or a drum so we can really tweak it. So I did a lot of research on how to mic tap dancer. The way we started, we would just take a short mic stand like you'd use for a kick drum, but we put a 57 on the stand and just literally point it at the ground and the tap dancer would tap in front. It can never get very loud before it feeds back, and it really just gets a very small area. So then I found out that the Rockettes had these shoes that they actually um, made, and they tapped with them, and the mics were actually in the shoes. Well, that was kind of out of our budget and just way too much work. So then the other method is you actually get two lab mics that are wireless and you tape them to the feet or their ankles and you face them at the stage. Well, having two lab mics and with all the costume changes just sounded really hard. Another idea I had was to put a contact mic under the stage. Our stage is built just like the floor of a home that has floor joists, uh, kind of like you can kind of see right here. And the problem was when I put the contact mic between the floor joists, all it did was get sound between that one section right there. So researching further, I found a video of one of my favorite bands, Postmodern Jukebox. You can look up Postmodern Jukebox tap dancing to find it. It features two girls tap dancing on boards. The resonance for the boards becomes a musical instrument, much like a violin or a guitar. However, if you watch the video, they are using condenser mics to mic the boards. They can do that because they're on a sound stage, but I need a better solution. So I did more research and discovered people were making tap boxes using contact mics. But what's a contact mic? So I ordered one. So what is a contact mic? It's basically a mic they use on acoustic guitars, uh, violins, saxes, and whatever you stick it to, it picks up the sound off the vibrations. This one is a Marcus Berry, and it was actually normally used for an acoustic guitar. I'm in no way saying this is the best kind of contact mic to use, but it is working really well for me. It was about $65. It comes with all this two-sided tape that you basically use to stick on boards or a musical instrument or whatever you want. This is our stage, and I put a piece of plywood, a four by three piece of plywood, and I got a spoon, and I put a contact mic under it, put some rubber, and so it'd be kind of suspended like I saw in a red, and this is kind of what it sounds like. You can't hear. In the video, it looks like it is just making the sound straight off the board, but it actually is very loud throughout the entire room. But the compressor on my cell phone is making it sound like it's just as loud as everything else. But it, the great thing is you can really turn this up about as loud as you possibly want. So it's pretty easy. You just get a piece of plywood. I hear maple or a hardwood is the best. And in this one, I painted it. I have no idea how long it's going to last being painted. Sure, there might be a, a better finish that would take more abuse. I wanted to get this thing done as opposed to taking my time. And so we could get it on stage quickly. So pick a plywood. Looks like they were four by four. I went with four by three, so it'd be easier to carry on the stage. So this stuff right here is, is that rubber mat stuff they put in playrooms and garages. Um, I, people said I could find it at the hardware store. I couldn't find it at the hardware store, so I went to, I actually just went on Amazon and looked. When you cut your rubber mat, make sure you do it in a way that it's on the perimeter of the entire bottom, especially the corners and make sure they are butted up all the way to the edge. If you don't, it can be kind of dangerous. The board can actually flip up and make it really awkward when you're trying to get on. 
gluing rubber to wood is not easy and I hope this works out, but in my research, I tried this. It's this Roberts 2001. I found mine on Amazon. The guy had done a lot of research on it, forgot his name, sorry about that. But hopefully this will make sure it's nice and solid. I know this floor glue is really messy and hard to work with. So, and it's, this is not what it's made for. So I, ma I made sure that everything was sized properly and labeled. So next you're gonna apply the glue to the rubber. If you've never laid a linoleum floor in a bathroom, the way you do it is you basically have one tool which you take some glue out, put on the floor, and then a trowel. If you don't know what a trowel is, you probably should look that up. But this is me uh, doing that. So in short, you take a little glue out, put it on the back, and then you smush it around so it gets all the areas, and you use the trowel, and that makes sure that you have an even coat all the way around. Then I flip it over, and I stick it on. This stuff takes two to three days to dry according to the directions, and I'm really hoping it's going to stick and it's gonna work out. So it's been a couple days and I have taken the uh, paint cans off and I've secured the Barkus Berry Piezo Guitar Transducer or contact mic. I tried to secure it the best I can using the glue gun so I could use this quarter inch cable that turns into an XLR and plug it in without a lot of breakage. It works and it's holding strong, but that cable is loose and I think I'm gonna get a lot of crackling if we move that thing around, especially if someone's stomping on it. So reviewing how good this glue did, it looks like it's done really well. I mean, this rubber is really sticking. However, I thought it'd be more like liquid nails and it would be kind of solid at this point. So I think I got a couple more days and I've been spending a lot of time using a piece of cloth and wiping off some of the stickies. But I'm gonna put a fan on it and let it sit. Well, here it is up on the stage, and uh, the glue never really dried. It's kind of sticky. I've just been wiping it off as I go along. Um, here's that jack I was talking about, and uh, it plugs into our audio snake, which goes to a soundboard, 218 subs, and a bunch of other QSC sound equipment. So let's hear it. So unfortunately our tap dancer wasn't available so I asked Jen, our choreographer, to jump on it with her flats, non-tap shoes. Well, that's it. If you ever want to see it in action, come down to the Boomer Room. It's the Boomer Room STL.com. And uh, come see a show. And if you're a tap dancer, I hope this has helped you out.